Yeah, we, we're good to go. We're about to go live. Sounds good. Perfect. Boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have an incredible guest with us. Um, one who we look forward to getting some powerful information from, as well as inspiration. And that is none other than Mr. Delgado. How are you doing today, sir? Fine. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, sir. The, the honor is myself, my family, and the viewing audiences, uh, for sure. What The first question we want to know, uh, Mr. Delgado, is what um, is Narconon? What exactly is it? Okay, well, Narconon, um, I've worked there for about seven years. And Narconon is a program uh, that helps a drug addict or an al alcohol addict actually overcome their addictions so that they can lead a happy and productive life. Mm. That's the basis of it, I guess. Okay, great. Yes, sir. So do you mean to say that if someone is battling addiction, it, they can beat it and live a productive life after, after they beat it? Oh, definitely, definitely. Of the people, I mean, um, let, let's put it this way. Nobody, you, me, or anybody else, when they're five, six, seven, ten years old, say, I'm going to grow up to be a drug addict. I'm going to grow up and I'm going to steal things. I'm going to lie. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get a drug. So what I would tell the students when I was there is that if addiction was something easy to get rid of, they would have gotten rid of it already. They would have said, no, that's not for me. That's it. The, the problem, there's, there's two or three factors that really affect addiction. And Narconon addresses these so that the person actually is strong enough to overcome the addiction and then can lead a happy and successful life. Um, I'm, I'm in contact with many of my past graduates who now you know own their own business? They got married, have a family, and uh, you know they call me up or text me and say, "How's it going, Mr. Don?" And I said, "Great. How are you?" And they said, I've, "I'm doing great now. I just got married. Uh, I just had my second kid." So it's very. Um, I'm not going to say it's easy because it isn't, but uh, the rewards are very, very big. The rewards are wonderful. Okay, great. Yes, sir. And what is the, um, you said you, what is the, how can people get in contact with you who are battling addiction? Well, normally the people who would contact us would be either the parents, the relatives, or the spouses. Okay. Um, but they can go to the website called narconon.org. That's N-A-R-C-O-N-O-N dot O-R-G. Uh, that gives all the information about the program. It gives the treating the facilities, treatment facilities around the world. Uh, or they can call. We have an 800 number. Uh, it's 1-888-407-0553. Okay, great. And and pe when once people uh, call you all, how long does the program usually last? Well, the, the nice thing about this program is um, it's not a 30 day program. You basically are moving through this at your own pace. Um, some people obviously are a little bit more complicated, I would say, than others. So it could take anywhere from two to six months, uh, depending on how much how much help this person actually needs. But it's laid out in a series of steps. Um, not necessarily 12 steps, but different parts that they actually do. And then once they complete one, one part of the program, they move on to the next and so on and so on uh, until they finally graduate and they're drug free. Hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, wonderful. Okay. So now you said most time people reach out to you are the family members of the, or um, the spouse or the loved ones. Once they, once they do that, uh, for people who are watching, um, you, once we go to the website, there are uh, different locations all across the country, correct? Yeah, around the world, actually, yes. Around the world, okay. Beautiful, yes, sir. And what is the main um, the main objective 
uh, that you all accomplish? Like, what's the main thing that, that you all do? Well, I think one of the most important things is that we want to give drug education because um, parents or spouses or anybody, to be honest, um, is not educated on drug abuse, signs of drug abuse, what drugs can do, um, you know, and then just the basic information. So a lot of times what will happen is a, a child will start acting in a different way. Well, you know, parents may think, well, it's just them growing up, um, but they don't really see the signs of addiction and they're not able to actually intervene in time. So a lot of it is education, educating the parents um, in the first place. Uh, in the second place, educating them on what the program actually does. Really, drug addiction, like I said, has many different uh, facets to it. Uh, first of all, you have the physical addiction. So the person physically, if he stops taking the drug, will get sick, will go through withdrawals, uh, we'll get cravings, you know, that sort of thing. So <clears throat> that's one part of the, of the actual problem. The person may, you know, with, with, unless they're super, super mentally strong, then they're going to keep using the drug because their body actually needs it and, and almost needs it to survive. Uh, so that's the one part, you know, the second part would be the actual mental addiction so, and, and when I say mental addiction, I mean, uh, if the person has a lot of problems in their life, can't seem to handle or cope, then they may start taking drugs to kind of get by. And then unfortunately that hooks right into the um, physical addiction because then their body is addicted and then they can't get off of it either. And it just compounds itself on one on top of the other. You know, the other, the other thing that happens too uh, another factor, and I, I'm not going to say it's a moral, it's a moral decay because drug addicts will do things that if they were to look back on it, they would be ashamed of. They would feel bad about what they did. Um, so they're taking the drugs to kind of forget or to push aside this, this feeling of responsibility or guilt, which then feeds into the mental, which then feeds into the physical. So there's, there's a lot of different factors. Uh, like I said, I wish there was a way that somebody could just say, I'm not an addict anymore, and boom, they're not an addict anymore. But it's, it's just not, uh, it's not in the realm of possibility. They need, definitely need to get help. Um, and, and some people can. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that uh, this is not a 12-step program. And although 12-step has helped a lot of people, um, it, it's not really addressing the physical part, the cravings part of it. So the Narcodon program has different parts that will address each one of these sections. Um, there's even one part uh, that talks about education. Um, if somebody is not doing well in school, then it, you know they start falling behind, falling behind. They feel bad about themselves and about them how smart they think they are. So what they'll do is they'll start taking drugs with their friends because then they don't care. They just start doing drugs. Yes, sir. And one of the sections of the program actually gives the person tools on how to study and how to learn um, because that's a very important part, not only of addiction, but of life itself. Um, if, you, if you're not able to learn, then you're pretty much stuck. And not just stuck, you're going backwards because everybody else is moving forwards. So you have to be a good learner and, and know how to learn. And there are specific techniques and things that you can do that will actually help you do that. So that's, that's just one part of the program itself. But it's a very comprehensive, holistic program uh, that's going to address all these different factors that may have led somebody to become a drug addict and not only become a drug addict, but, but stay a drug addict, which is what we don't want. Mm. Beautiful. Excellent. And Sister Robin, uh, my sister Naima, my sister Miriam, Sister Mariah, so many people are showing love. And I can't wait to put this on YouTube. Uh, please like, please thank you all for watching the People's Podcast. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, now, Mr. Um, Delgado, this is this is, seems to be um, very prevalent in many communities. 
uh, what about in within the inner city or dealing with with you know black the black community? Uh, people might make it a financial thing. Is there a way to get like insurance, or do you all accept like what's the how does that work? As far as I, know, I haven't I haven't worked there in, in several years, but insurance is covered, as far as I know. But these are questions you would need to ask uh, whenever you call into one of the actual counselors these days. Okay. You know, one of the things that we used to do, and we still do quite a bit, is like I said, the drug education. So we would go into the inner city schools, uh, the um, after school programs, and actually teach the kids about drugs, um, what drugs do, you know, what, what, they act, what are the actual facts about drugs, so that they're aware of what they can do. Because, you know, and it's one thing to... You say, don't do drugs, don't do drugs. I, I, I was, I don't know if I was lucky or unlucky, but uh, my uncle was uh, addicted to heroin when I was a, a young boy. And uh, he got in a car accident and came to live with us. So I, I was the one, he broke his neck. So I was the one who had to drive him around. I was 16, 17 at the time. Mm. The, the good part was that he told me about every drug he said, this is what I felt like. This is how it was. I felt really good. I felt this. I felt that. But afterwards, I didn't. Um, and he said, and if you ever take any, I'll kill you. So um, so that was kind of, I didn't have any curiosity about it. Mm. I, I wasn't like, hmm, let me try that. Let me try that. I, I already kind of knew. And unfortunately, he actually died of an OD after that and uh i had to go identify his body so that was a very strong message for me that uh even though later in life i was offered drugs and you know drug drugs are everywhere I, i'm sorry they they are everywhere um but i had the the knowledge to be able to say no if i go down that path who knows where i'll end up so i was lucky personally on that end um but some people aren't, and and it it affects. Unfortunately, it it you know going back to the mental part, um, you know living in the inner city is not an easy task, and uh, a lot of times the opportunities don't present themselves. The education may not be to a level where these kids can actually excel, except maybe in a few cases, and so unfortunately that's. That's something that, that we really need to work hard on to educate these kids, you know, help them uh, because they're our future. The, the kids are our future and we need to help them as much as we can. It's a lot easier to prevent than it is to fix. Mm. A lot easier to prevent than to fix. So, um, you know, the, the Narconon can actually send out, I, they may be, I'll have to check with them, but we actually have little booklets of the truth about drugs that people can order. They're free. You, you get them for free mm -hmm. and you can, uh, you know, give that to your child. In fact, I probably have one around here somewhere. Um, but anyway, so the, it's definitely an educational process that has to be done. And um, in many cases, uh, the drug addict himself and the parent don't really know what to do about it. So it's, it's good to get educated because if you know, if you're educated on something, you can actually do something about it. If you're not, then you're pretty much helpless. Mm. Okay, great. Yes, sir. And so many people are, are showing you love and uh, thank you to the Rob people who are putting the, the website in the, the chat and I can't wait to put this on YouTube. Once again, sir, can you please give us the website uh, for people who may have come late? Yes, it's narconon.org. So it's N-A-R-C-O-N-O-N dot O-R-G. Wonderful. Well, I hope that uh, you all continue to do the great work. I look forward to um, hearing some persons. This is, uh, we're doing Recovery Week on the People's Podcast this week. So if you all stay tuned, upcoming this week, we're going to have some people who testify to how auditing, uh, therapy, how whatever it takes for people to beat addiction, how they've done it, and how we can continue to be positive uh, members in the community. So I want to thank you, Mr. Delgado, for your time, and and hopefully 
somebody, once I put this out there, it can affect uh, different people's family members. You never know uh, what we can do in loved ones to uh, to encourage us to beat addiction. Uh, now, does, narc- does that deal with alcohol addiction as well? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, okay. It does. You know, you know, and, and that's the thing. You, you mentioned something that's very, very important, uh, the family. Because the drug addict's not hurting himself. Uh, well, he's hurting himself, but not only himself. He's hurting the whole family. He's hurting all of his friends. He's hurting society. Um, maybe not knowingly or wittingly, but these are all sectors that are being affected. And... Um, you know, you, there, there's never, you're not going to find a family that says, oh, my son is a drug addict. I'm happy about it. So, you know, my daughter is, is hooked on heroin. I, 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 I'm, I feel so good. It, it's really, uh, you know, industry, the workplace. Um, I'm going to say it's probably one of the worst uh, afflictions that our society is facing right now uh, for all levels of society. And it's, and it's very sad. Absolutely, it is, and um, to see people who have the, who've been addicted to meth and just and random, it's it's almost becoming um, very normal. Is there a way for us to take the taboo of Dianetics or therapy or warrants and narconine? Is there a way for us to take the ta- to, to to discuss it so that people can say, "I need help"? Is there a way for us to to better do that? Well, like I said, it, it all has to do with education because once you understand what's going on with a drug addict, then it's a lot easier to handle them. Um, As I said, there's different things that one of the very first steps after they go through withdrawal, uh, there's a part that's called the purification or the sauna program. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what will happen is this is the part of the body. What will happen is the person takes a drug and um, part of that drug will actually be stuck in their tissues. Uh, or it gets tied up in the, in the fat cells and in the tissues. It doesn't always, always flush out. So what happens is, let's say the person stops using the drugs, but they're tired or maybe they haven't slept well or maybe they're exercising. Some of these drugs will then be released back into the bloodstream and that's how they get cravings again. Mm. So they, it's like a, I like to say it's like a Pringles. You can't eat just one or a Lay's potato chip, you can't eat just one. You want to have more and more and more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's, you know, one of the parts of the actual addiction process. We have to get rid of these things um, so that later in life, they don't have these cravings. The other effect that that has, which I've noticed, is that it makes what's called the drug personality. Uh, And I've seen this happen where before the person started taking drugs, they were nice, they were carefree, they were friendly. They start taking drugs and they become surly and angry all the time and just become really much antisocial. Um, and a lot of that, even after they stop taking drugs, will still stay there. Mm, so mm. that's what they need to do is actually get in a, it's a sauna program. They take a lot of vitamins. They sweat out these impurities in their body and they come out feeling clean. The interesting thing is I've seen, speaking of meth, um, I've actually seen people sweat out crystals on their skin. Like you mm. could, it was actually little crystals. Mm. And uh, so that stuff is in there and that, that's been scientifically proven. Um, but anyway, so that, that's, that's one of the things. It, it's just, it's just nice. It's nice to see somebody get through that and and be the different person than they were going back to the person they were before they started using drugs. Wonderful, wonderful. And for those who may not be um, addicted to necessarily drugs or alcohol, is the pure is the pure and being in the sauna is that something that we all should do? <clears throat> well, here's in in my experience, I've done I've done the pure program. Um, unless you're going to eat nothing but organic food and uh, drink purified water and not use any chemicals on your body, um, you're going to have residues. Uh, You're going to have pesticide residues. uh, You're going to have cleaning residues, uh, you know, that sort of thing. I was, I actually um, didn't do drugs. 
But I, I, for a time there, I worked for a pest control company. When I did the, the sauna program, I could smell the uh, chemicals coming out of my skin. Mm, so, mm, and I felt, mm. honestly, I felt so much better and much, so much more alive after I finished the Purif. You know, I felt 20, 30 years younger. Um, it just didn't do anything for my gray hair. But anyways, that's another story. <laughs> 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 but you know you can really embrace life a lot better um if a person I, i'm gonna give a test if if somebody um out there maybe they uh like have these blank spots where they just catch themselves daydreaming for no reason or if they have trouble uh experiencing emotions you know something happens they just feel kind of wooden or um they have trouble thinking you know, man, I wish I, I knew, thought I knew that and this and that. And they're not old like me. I'm talking about, you know, younger. Yes, sir. Um, then it's very possible that the, the purification program will help them quite a bit. Um, a lot of people going through chemotherapy have done it after the chemotherapy mm. and feel a hundred times better. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So there's a lot of different uses, but I would highly recommend it. It's, it's, it's life changing. Okay, great. And I look forward to I, I look forward to doing it. It's definitely something that's on my list to do very soon. Uh, Sister Valerie uh, said she did the period. It was amazing. Everyone should do it. Thank you very much, ma'am. And um, I want once again, uh, Mr. Delgado. I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the People's Podcast to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And thank everyone who's watching. I can't wait to put this on YouTube. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Uh, have a good day, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mahomet. Take care to everybody out there. Yes, sir. All right, goodbye.